This is Ben Woodford here at Modern Education Radio Hour on 90.1 KZSU Stanford. This is a show where we dig into everything from current research trends to far out ideas concerning any topic even remotely related to education. I'm Ben Woodford, your host here in the studio. I'll be with you every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. for your commute. Here at Modern Education, we bring cutting-edge ideas, philosophical discussions, insights from experts, and just about everything else you want to know. The goal is to help listeners interact with and understand learning in all its forms. If you have questions or suggestions for the show, you can tweet at BenWoodford1 on Twitter. I'll do my best to include your ideas in future shows. If you're a teacher, parent, student, or anyone interested in our collective future, I hope you'll tune in each week as we examine new ideas and interview guests from a variety of backgrounds. I'm your host, Ben Woodford, here on Modern Education. We are back in the studio again with another guest to talk about education. My guest today is named Tatum Dioro. She's a senior in high school. She's working on deciding on her college acceptance letters and figuring out where she'll be going to college next. She's considering the Menlo College USA weightlifting program because so she can stay in the Bay Area. She's a track thrower for shot put and, put and disc the first female football team weight trainer for her high school, and an amazing young woman. So I'm going to bring her on the mic here and say hello. Tatum, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, I, the pleasure is all mine, <laughs> believe me. So uh, first, I'd just like to know a little bit about your experience in high school as the, the weight trainer for the football team. I know that's sort of a rare thing. I think you're the first woman coach or trainer for that. Yeah. How did that come about? What is that like for you? Um, actually, how it ended up coming about was I was at a um, peer tutor fitness, pr- um, fitness program after school in the weight room. And I decided just to go and lift um, before my own practice. And during that time, the uh, d- during the time that I was just warming up, the football coach came in and saw me and asked, hey, can you teach our boys how to do that? And it was about 30, almost 40 boys. And I said, sure. So then from there, it just began. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Wow, so this was sort of a chance happening yeah where you were happened to be in the right place at the right time and the right person saw you Indeed. and it opened up a whole new set of circumstances for you yeah. that's amazing um yeah. how did you get into weightlifting oh okay so how i got into weightlifting was actually seeing my sister lift and she li- started lifting because of my father who um played rugby in college and he lifted during his uh during that mm-hmm. and so when I was watching my sister lift at the Sports Palace in um, South San Francisco, I would just sit there and I'd admire her. And eventually, uh, Jim Schmitz, my coach, who coached her as well during that time, um, put me through a little thing. I literally just had to stand, turn, and he said, all right, you're good to go. And just to show maybe some mobility and that, that way you wouldn't actually have to babysit me since yeah. I was only eight years old at the time. Eight years yeah. old? Yeah. Wow. Hey. What were you lifting at eight years old? All right. So there were photos and it shows me lifting as uh, Jim would call it a little, little weights from upstairs. Uh-huh. And upstairs is actually a physique magnifique, which is a uh, primarily a bodybuilding um, gym right above my Olympic weightlifting gym. Yeah. And it would, it was about, let's see. So the bar itself was about five pounds. It's imagine it was a smaller bar. And then I believe the two sides of the weights were both 10 pounds. So about like 25 pounds. Yeah. Around there. Wow. Wow. So you just 25 pounds. Yeah. Well, I mean, at eight years old, that's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thinking how big is an eight year old? 75 pounds, maybe. Probably around there. Yeah. So that's a third of your weight. Yeah. That's, that was substantial. And how about now? Currently, um, my PRs just for just in training, um, Mm -hmm. is 60 kilograms for the snatch and 75 kilograms for the um, clean and jerk. So we, we work in kilograms um, because it's generally international or Olympic right. level, yeah. Yeah, that's how everybody but Americans <laughs> yeah. work, work for weight. Okay, that's very cool, very yeah. cool. So I just want to know how this has affected your life, having this kind of focus and this ability to know something that you're good at and that you have put a lot of time into. How does that feel to you or where does that 
put your focus in life? Honestly, well, I didn't really have a、um, space of worship. And actually, one of my college essays ended up being about how gravity, I essentially made gravity my own religion.、Hmm. So I kind of related it with religion because.、Um, Say, like a dad would normally bring, which my dad would bring me to weightlifting on Monday, Wednesday,、yeah. Friday. And rather than the dad normally doing that, a dad may bring his daughter to, let's say, like some kind of church function, like a mass or so religiously, he would bring them elsewhere rather than the gym. Right. Bring your daughter, eight year old daughter, to the gym. And with that, I kind of just grew up with it. Um, trained with weightlifting, and I realized later it really has become my religion in a sense. Not only do I do it all the time, but it's where I, um, um, my strength is where I get a lot of my confidence from. So I definitely relate it to a religion in my life. Wow, 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 that's such an interesting、um, analogy、oh, or、thanks. metaphor that you're using there. It's powerful to think、yeah. about, right? Because religion has such a Sometimes loaded kind of connotation,、mm-hmm. but also it can be such an important and transformative part of people's lives. Yeah, yeah. And so when you describe it that way, I'm imagining that this is something that you not only spend a lot of time doing and spend a lot of time thinking about, but also in a way put your faith in it. Yeah, I definitely say so. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean to you to put your faith in your sport?、Um, I, would, I would just say. It would, it would mean to me that it's kind of、um, just like a really neat way to own、uh, my own strength and power rather than relying on another source to do so or either another rules or any other outside or external thing judging me essentially. It's just all in, internal or physical, you know, physical strength. So I would be able to define who I am and present that. Externally, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. So you, so you think that this has given you a lot of strength to face、mm-hmm. some, not just physical strength, obviously、yeah. that it's happened,、yes. but to face the struggles that most teenagers have to deal with around, you know, peer pressures and things like that? Yeah, definitely.、Um, it's,、uh, I'd say it's helped me a lot with、um, self confidence and. Definitely as a stress relief because I'm just exerting myself in、um, a healthy way, benefiting myself, strengthening myself, and you know, mostly emotionally, mentally, and physically. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow.、Uh, I sound like your dad right now. <laughs>、uh, yeah. So, I'm thinking about what this means for your academics. Yeah. So, has there. Has this, do you think, supported your academics or does it ever take away from your academics?、Um, What's your perception of that? Let's see. I don't, it's only ever added to it, at how I, in my opinion, because I wouldn't ha- be able to be as focused as I am on, in both channels, so、mm-hmm. in sport or academically, if I didn't have sport to、uh, relieve that stress and gain that confidence. Yeah. So, If I didn't have the sport or the、um, physical element, I probably wouldn't be whole. I don't think I would be whole. So I wouldn't be able to complete、um, the other, you know, learning academic side of myself. Right, right. Because you have this outlet that you're passionate about、mm-hmm. and it gives you maybe the focus for the、yes. other things. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, that's very neat. What about, what do you think students or young people that don't have that kind of outlet, how do you think they? Do they get to that same place that you're at, or do they have trouble? Or what's your, do you have a perception of what that, how that works for other people your age? Yeah,、um, I feel as though a lot of people I am close friends with,、uh, either, yeah, close friends with, deal a lot with、um, de- like depression or anxiety and、mm. stuff in that kind of realm.、Um, a lot of them generally have physical outlets,、um, but. I do see other lacks of, or、uh, an area lacking in self confidence and self image. So maybe that's in particular, like just with weightlifting, maybe just how I've seen it.、Mm-hmm. But yeah, so other people who do sports, I feel as though even if they have both the, the elements of academic and sport,、mm-hmm. they still, there's like a self confidence 
and then also, you know, insecurity and then anxiety and then kind of a depression thing. Like kind of just all building and that schoolwork in itself is not really um, individualized. So I feel as though it's not really um, beneficial to the person as a whole. That kind of yeah. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's such a, an interesting thing for young people to try to find their place in this world. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like school always does that for us. Yeah. School gives us very specific things to drive for, like grades and attendance yeah. and college admissions. Huh? But those don't always seem to be the things that motivate young people to stay focused and to have the kind of drive like you're having. Yeah. yeah. So are there... Are there friends that you've seen that have found other ways to do this? Or do you do you have a way that you would hope to see someone you cared about be able to find direction in their life? Um, I do see a lot of people who at least have a decent direction, but generally it's in the channel or the um, path that's like, like college um, that's kind of already laid out for them. Mm-hmm. And um, we were actually talking about it today in class um, about just college being the only channel after high school and if you don't do college then it's either no college or college and no college you'll get a lot less support people won't understand and it won't be like oh well what are you doing better some people might be doing things better for themselves rather than what the status quo is whatever other people want them to do so I I would just say um, yeah just kind of that general gist of it yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's move on a little yeah, bit cool. here. I know. Uh, I know you didn't always do weightlifting as your primary sport. No, Where I did, did you not. start in sports? Um, I actually started in soccer. Um, yeah. AYSO. I was about five years old. I think that's the youngest you really can be. Um, yeah, I did. I was on the Pink Panthers with a lot of my uh, best friend. Or well, one of my best friends. Um, I'm still. We still go to school together now. Yeah. Wow. And so you think your family was a big influence in you being able to start these kinds of things or how, oh, how, that, how is your family influential? Oh, that's, that's a, that's a very good one. Um, actually going back to that, that like little soccer team, my mom was the, the soccer coach and she's always been my soccer coach and, um, and except for high school and other CYs and teams like that. But yeah, she's always been there as a figure, like a very strong woman and always helped me and, you know, go grow physically, um, understand the game, understand the game of life because she's also my mother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So she's at least my mother. It's helped me in that way. And my dad, he's just whatever I kind of need. Um, he's always... Um, kind of opposition sometimes generally not we're both generally just you know what's going to benefit you in the long run um what's going to um help you become a better person it's kind of generic but it's definitely true it definitely applies to them and then the rest of my family brother sister nana um grandparents and stuff they've always been generally supportive um uh, my sister, definitely a great role model. She took a different route mm-hmm. uh, than normal college, and she are, she went almost instantaneously into the work world. Um, did community, then work world. And she's doing great there. She's doing great, and she's a great person to look up to for that reason, just going off and doing her, going off the beaten path generally and still succeeding. Wow. Yeah. So you th- you're, it sounds like what you're saying is your, your mom has been a really s- consistent force yeah. to help you be interested and achieving yes. your, your physical endeavors yes. and maybe even in, in your personal development. Definitely. Yeah. Yourself as yes. a well-rounded human being. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then your dad has been a similarly helpful yes. and supportive, maybe even a, a broker for you to help you get new opportunities. Exactly. Push your yes. limits for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a a really big advantage you have, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, these parents that are I there got, for you? Yeah. I got two alphas for um, parents, actually. So it's, uh, yeah, it's beneficial for me, cool for them, I guess, but definitely beneficial for their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so neat. It's, yeah. You're so lucky to have such wonderful parents like that. I, 
I say that every day, really, yeah. I, and I mean it, yeah. 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 Well, your parents are lucky to have such an appreciative <laughs> young woman in their lives as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I understand that you have had some, some gold medals in the American Open Series lifting mm. categories. Well, um, tell us a little bit about that. What's that experience been oh, okay. like for you? So, that, uh, the American Open Series one, it was my um, first... Uh, first national level meet and that was last year and I competed on my birthday which was March 17th so 2017 Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it was quite an an amazing experience I worked that whole um, well portion of 2017 uh, because it was only three months in and then the rest of 2016 um, just focusing only on weightlifting for that my entire junior year Mm -hmm. Um, because I want to see how far I can go with it because I've been doing it for years since I was eight years old as I said earlier and yeah ended up on the national stage and I wanted to see how that'll continue so I I can't wait to (laughs) I'm going to be like the biggest fan now I can't wait to see what you do with all this so I'm curious because I know when you win a gold medal or mm. three gold medals yeah, yeah. in your case, it, it people see you on the stage and they mm. see this final product yes, kind of thing, true. but it's never that easy, right? You don't no. just get up in the morning and go, I'm going to win three gold medals oh, today. Yeah. This is a process, yes, right? Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm curious if you can remember some of the setbacks that you came across on the way to oh, getting there. definitely. Maybe tell us a little story about something that was a challenge for you on the way. Honestly, uh, let's see. A bit of t- uh, initially, because um, when I began weightlifting, I needed to get transportation there, so my dad would take me, and so that was kind of a thing. I'd take him out of work. I'd either you know come right home from, from school and go right there, um, three uh, three days a week and for hours. So that took up a lot of time. Um, thankful he was able to do that, and so. And then also since it was farther than just like, hey, you should just go to school and do a sport there. Oh, well, they don't have weightlifting. So right. so it's not like I could just easily do that. And so I'd always have to go really out of my way to do it. Um, sometimes I would feel incredibly tired, you know, imagine um, coming right after school, having a snack. Okay, grab your bag. Let's go. Yeah, every, all, yeah three days a week. And just that general... Um, Routine, kind of, you know, I would get tired. I would get tired from it. But then eventually, when I was able to drive myself, got my license, I realized, hey, there's a lot of benefit to this. Like that was the spe- that was like during junior year. So before that, it was more like I viewed weightlifting more as a chore and just plain old training. But then I realized, hey, I have potential in this. I'm going to give it time. I'm going to focus, and I did. I used my time that I took in my hands because before I was leaning on my dad a lot more to take me. Right. And since then now, and then junior high school, um, I would take myself, I would go, I would be dedicated and that kind of going back, I eventually got on the national stage. So, wow. yeah. So you, you, you're, it sounds the, the struggle you're recounting for me here is this struggle of the, the, the daily dedication mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and yeah. the, the, the constraints of having to make all that work yes. and have a life and sleep and eat and all the things we all have exactly, to do without exa- adding that yeah, on top. Yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. yeah. So that's a, that takes a quite a bit. I mean, on the days when your friends want to go out and do things, Definitely. you have to say, sorry, I'm going to go work out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was an uncommon thing as well to be doing. It wasn't like, oh yeah, like a, like a sport at school, like doing soccer. I did soccer for two years. Um, you know, it was a lot easier. You go right from school, go there, have you know, talk with your friends, go mm-hmm. done. You know, done. You're done by five. Whereas me, it's like, all right, five. You're just you're not. I don't even think I'd be done at five. Um, so usually, if you account for those two hours of weightlifting, you'd actually have to add on two more because getting there and then leaving there right. and then whatever else you have. And then, yeah. So just the, the daily routine of just living, I guess, and, and yeah. added on top. Yeah. 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 Do you ever feel like you missed anything by not being, spending that time just being with your friends? In all honesty, uh, to an extent, I'd say, but realizing, like, seeing my actual, like, I love my friend group, the friend group that I have currently, mm-hmm. 
And those are the people I ended, wanted to end up with. And thankful I actually did. I got, got more than I asked for. And um, those people are quite similar to myself. So sometimes we'll have bigger things going on than, hey, let's go here. Uh, like, let's go uh, grab lunch on this time. Those things are important and great. But sometimes you also have to worry about the things that are bigger, like weightlifting even though it's like one like two hours generally two hours like actual practice um adding those on and compounding that amount of work and energy and not missing one you will eventually amount to something great but if you know if you can it's whatever you end up putting your time into is kind of what you'll get out of so if i put more time into friends and these particular friends I would actually lose out more on myself. But if I benefit myself, I'm going to get along more with these friends because it's a different kind of, mm. different caliber of friends that I feel I have. Yeah. Whereas they're, it's not selfish. It's, they just want to better themselves so that way they can be better friends, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So if, if I was so bold as to say, if there was a young person listening right now and they were contemplating either practicing the thing that they love or going to spend time with your friends. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say your endorsement would be you're not going to miss anything by spending a little extra time on what matters to you and let your friends wait because they'll still be there if they're really your friends? Indeed, yes, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so I, I was just paraphrasing. Oh, yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So anybody listening that's uh, in that situation right now, I hope they will take Tatum's advice and go <laughs> off and do what you love because your friends will be waiting for you if they're true friends. Yeah. yeah. And even if the current ones are, you know, they're current ones, but yeah, in the, in the end, they will be the true ones or at least you'll meet the true ones by doing what you love. That's a, that'd be another thing too. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Oh, Who cool. have you met? What are some of the inspiring or in, you know, just amazing people that you've met through this journey. Is there somebody that comes to mind? You don't have to name a name or oh, a okay. can if you want, mm. but what has that been like? Who have you been exposed to through this process? Hmm. This, the process of weightlifting? Yeah, through, oh. you know, getting to okay. this high of a level. Um, let's see. So, obviously, my uh, coach, Jim Schmitz, um, three-time Olympic, a team, team USA, Olympic weightlifting coach, long name, long title. And um, obviously what he's done, I see him more than I see any other grandparent. <laughs> um, I see him way more than my friends. Uh, so he's obviously a key part in my life. He's a celebrity. I mean, he's a famous guy. And yeah, I view him, yeah. Uh, see him all the time, value his time, and I hope he values my time with him. That's one person. Mm -hmm. um, the other people I've met along the way are just uh, the individuals who also work out at the Sports Palace, um, his gym. And generally the Sports Palace, it's kind of like a revolving door. Sometimes you'll get people who stay. Sometimes you'll get people who just come in for a few times, and that was it. Some people move, some people whatever it may be. So it's kind of an ongoing thing. The membership always changes. And um, I ended up being one of the longest standing, even though I'm one of the, well, I am the youngest mm -hmm. to be the longest standing. Yeah. And yeah, so that the f just talking about the sports palace itself. And outside of that, I've just met other people who um, are interested in weightlifting and would like to show me, sh or me to show them how to lift. Um, since I do have my USAW um, sports performance coach certification uh, level one, um, I am actually able to show people how to lift. So as um, the uh, football, showing the um, football team how to lift and the proper way to do it or um, different programming things and different movements and just be able to form, perform the Olympic lifts correctly or at least a modification of it. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've got yourself, uh, sounds like some real ownership over this yeah. possibility that yeah. you've been developing. Yeah. I want to back up a little cool. bit. A few minutes ago, you mentioned something about the time when you started to see that you were capable of making this into something. Mm. Can you remember a turning point where you really started to notice that you were good at this or could be great? Mm -hmm. Or is, can, is there a moment that yeah. you can remember where that came clear for you? Uh, yes, actually. It was not. Um, it was not junior year, which was the year I dedicated um, just to weightlifting. 
Um, and it was not at the uh, national meet. Like, oh, yeah, I got, got the three gold medals in my total and my snatch and in my cleaner jerk. No, it wasn't then either. It was um, actually way after that. It was in, like, I, I almost, I'd say, like, October or November of um, 2017. Yeah, um, was when I was like, hey, um, I finally hit these numbers. So I had these numbers. It was 60 and 75. And in my head, I th like I literally drew it, um, or actually had them printed out in my room. And I just had them up there and then just keep them. And eventually I hit those numbers, um, 60 in the clean and jerk. Or not the clean and jerk, my mistake. The uh, snatch mm -hmm. and then uh, 75 in the uh, clean and jerk. And once I hit that, I was like, all right, I think we're onto something here. So then just continue, yeah. Even wow. though, like, I've already continued, but it was just a, that was a marker for me. That was a marker for me. Yeah. yeah. So I find that to be really interesting because you just said that you won three gold medals, but that wasn't the moment. Yeah, that was And it was actually after that. Yeah, it was way after like you months. had put in years into this sport yeah. and yeah. been recognized nationally as having, you know, accomplished within this. Mm. And it came afterwards that you really started to feel this inner focus and even maybe faith that you're moving yeah. to something really powerful. Yes. Yeah. So how important was that goal setting process in all of this? You mentioned having it up on your wall mm -hmm. and striving to it for a while. Yes. How does it, how does that come into play with your training other people or for your own training? Um, I would just say, let's see. So my own goal, the way I set my goals was if I got, just in my head, if I got that, the 60 and the 75, then it wasn't really for any particular reason. I just, in my head, I'm like, that seems reasonable enough. It seems attainable, but it also seems like enough of a stretch. So I thought those were good numbers, and turns out they actually ended up being a, um, uh, like a qualifying total for those combined. <laughs> Um, for a, another national meet, but I ended up being sick and not able to attend because um, mm -hmm. I had to go to another local meet to um, ha have that total already on there or already on my um, uh, athlete uh, profile in order to actually be able to go to the um, other national meet. So I ended up not being able to do that because um, I got sick. Mm -hmm. So... Um, going back to my own goal um, and also helping people with their own goals is seeing what they want out of it or um, just answering their questions that they have about Olympic weightlifting or helping them either in that moment, later in time, or whenever they ask for it. It's, um, I don't really go after them if I'm like lifting and they ask me a question or if like football coach takes me out of track to go and teach them. Um, um, I actually taught one of the coach's nie nieces, yes, um, how to lift, and she was interested in it, and I was totally happy teaching her, but I, I won't go completely and utterly like, oh, well, I'm just going to take all my, or kind of, yeah, that was a bit of a tangent. Yeah, yeah we're, but, we're talking about the goals, Yeah, yeah, right? just so. the goals, yeah. So just seeing what other people's goals are and kind of going from there and seeing what how you, how to personalize that, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you have set goals for yourself, and maybe you didn't know it right away that yes. those goals were sort of the the, the stepping stone yes. to get you into these other meets. Yes. But they were personal goals for you. Yes. And you seems like you let that be the way the people you train work as well. You let them set goals for what's important to them, and then you kind of think of your job as to help them get there. Mm, yes. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so. What are you considering as far as how you want to decide which school you go to? Um, a couple different factors. Uh, obviously, uh, Menlo, Menlo College has a, now has an um, Olympic weightlifting team. Um, my initial why, um, requirements for college is to be in the Bay Area, or at least close to it. Mm -hmm. And that was honestly a really... Um, it's a really large reason why I like Menlo because it's close to the Bay, uh, Bay Area, within the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, it has weightlifting. It can actually 
be a student athlete for an Olympic weightlift and that um, there are a few other schools in the country that do have that. But since I wanted to stay around here because I also want to develop um, a program that I already have in the works and I already have a logo and whatnot for it's called Power Walk. And yeah, I'd say Menlo College, yeah. So we'll, uh, I'm just looking into that heavily yeah. because of the Olympic weightlifting program. Right, well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I want to hear a little bit more about this. You, you told me in our pre-interview, that, and you just mentioned this this uh, exercise or fitness mm. program you're working on. Yes. How did this come about? What's it called? What are you, what are you hoping to do with this? Okay, so it's called Power Walk, and it's a, uh, fit, it's a fitness program that utilizes handheld walking dumbbells. So um, either you walk with the dumbbells for a period of time, uh, let's say 30 minutes mm-hmm. or you uh, walk for a prescribed um, distance like say a mile so you design this yeah yeah and then there's different exercises you can do within it I took um, inspiration from a, a physician who um, wrote a book called heavy hands mm-hmm. um, and he also had a very similar idea but um, he passed away and then later it went on and the company developed into other things. So yeah, I took inspiration from that and read all his studies and findings and thought it was an interesting way to do cardio because as being an Olympic weightlifter, I kind of like to run, kind of, generally not. (laughs) So yeah, um, cardio is not my absolute favorite and I thought that was a great alternative and turns out it was a really great alternative because within the um, physician's findings or research and studies, uh, the calorie burn of power walk essentially, yeah, it rivals that of a cross country skier because you're using all four limbs um, simultaneously. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm really curious about how you ended up just even feeling confident or self assured enough to be able to start a business or even attempt it at yeah. your age. What gives you the the confidence to be able to do that? Um, I'd say that kind of comes from, uh, my dad who pushes me, uh, pushing me to do things is just, uh, as we kind of talked about, kind of present different opportunities or at least shine light on different opportunities that I didn't initially see. And being in this area, I feel like innovation, um, is such a, um, huge thing. And I like innovation a lot. I like entrepreneurship. Those are, uh, I just feel if you go through those two two channels or you know two concepts themes, um, you're able to kind of have more power over your life and what you want to do because you're the decision maker. So mm-hmm. I feel as though that's what has um, brought me to Power Walk because it's something I love in the realm of weightlifting in the realm of strength. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so your parents, again, have been a huge mm. influence in giving you that that confidence to go forward with that. Maybe a little bit of necessity based on what you actually enjoy with mm. working out Indeed, and trying yeah. to find a way to make that exactly. work. Exactly. And how about your sister? Has she did was she maybe an influence for you to think about entrepreneurial ventures? You said she didn't go or she didn't go straight to college or she started doing something that sounded uh, entrepreneurial. Has that played a factor too? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, currently, she's working. Initially, she was working at um, as an intern at NetSuite, mm-hmm. and then later she um, got a job at another cybersecurity company. And I believe she's in the uh, social media, email marketing area around that area. And she's also doing other things for. Um, She's trying to work on her own app for um, for like a business card idea, online business card. So there would be no. Um, oh, I probably won't, shouldn't get into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll let her yeah. sell her yeah. own app. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. so you've maybe seen her taking maybe a non traditional route, Indeed. and it makes you feel a little more confident. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I say that with my dad since he has his own business as well. Right. And just being in the yeah, I say just overall being in the Bay Area and living here, just seeing that. Um, yeah, kind of just being able to take risks because why not? I don't know this. People are doing it. You should. I mean, essentially, it's kind of the opposite of what. Oh, you should not take risks. But in this area, you actually, you're. 
kind of not valued, but、um, it's almost greater, seen better, or something like Can't find the words exactly. But if you do take risks, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very entrepreneurial area. And、yeah. your dad is,、yeah. is all into that、yeah. as well. So, so that's been a great, huge influence on、yeah. you, it sounds like.、Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder for young people who don't have those kind of inputs. What do you think they can do? do you, I know this isn't yeah, know, yeah, your expertise yeah.、Oh, or anything, yeah, yeah. but I'm just really curious what、okay. you think a young person could do that doesn't have this strong foundational、uh, support. s、hmm. um, I'd say, tr- I mean, kind of generic, but try to find it essentially. But、yeah. um, you could, there's always help. In, in my opinion, there's always help as long as you reach out,、um, you know, either to a teacher,、um, to even a CEO. Is sometimes, you know, kind of being a student, you have a lot of advantages、um, being that, that,、uh, that status because you're learning and they understand,、uh, oh, you'll make mistakes, you won't, you're young, let's give you opportunities. At, at least in my opinion, in my、um, experience, that's how、mm-hmm. I felt.、Mm-hmm. And so if you just reach out, I believe you'll eventually be able to grab it. You know, that is such good advice. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> just, I mean, to hear you at your age with your, all your experiences be able to give that kind of a clear answer for、uh-huh. young, young people to learn from, I think coming from me, it wouldn't mean nearly as much as、uh-huh. coming from you. And it's such good advice. There's always people out there that will help. Yeah. And a lot of times it's having the bravery or the necessity <laughs> to be able to do that、exactly. and actually、yeah. find it. If you don't have it already, if you don't have awesome parents like you do,、uh-huh. and you know, these great role models that you've been exposed to,、yeah. that's an amazing piece of advice. I hope some young people, again, I hope any young people out there listening are taking notes here so <laughs> they, can, they can do stuff with what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope it's benefiting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So. <laughs> How do you feel about grading? You know, you've been, gra- you've been、uh, in、yeah. school for a long time and you've, you know, certainly had to earn grades and probably been judged by your grades. How, what is that, how does that feel to you, knowing you know, how hardworking you are and how dedicated you are to things? What does it mean when a teacher gives you a B or a C? I don't know if you ever got、uh, one of those. Oh,、no, uh, yeah, I've gotten a C before. <laughs>、uh, yeah.、I'm、how not- does that feel?、Um, well, I think it takes a different person to be a, like amazing or really like get an always, an, always get an A、mm-hmm. in、um, the academic world. And I think that's just only one sliver of kind of life or anything really.、Um, just be, yeah, being in the academic world and being able to strive is just one piece of what. Either the world wants you to do a w- life, if you want to think of a big com- concept, but、um, it's never really just、um, been about the grading. I kind of just take it at how, is it how it is, just kind of, okay, I got this, this is what I received. Either I do revisions, I don't re- do revisions, I accept it, move on, kind of thing.、Um, Yeah, kind of as simple as that, surprisingly.、Yeah. Um, generally, I've never struggled terribly with grades.、Right. So that's not been a thing with me. But I do know other students who that is a thing.、Um, um, that is、um, something they do struggle with. Yeah. And yeah. So it sounds like what you're saying is you kind of just let it roll off your back like, a, like、yeah. water on a rainproof jacket,、yeah. right?、Yeah. And just move on. Yeah. I, th- I think that's、uh, due to the fact that.、Um, I have so many other attributes that just in the academic world, that's only one piece of what I do or who I am, I guess.、Yeah. So it's, if you just, if you kind of broaden your scope, then that won't really affect you in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So you have enough things going on that you're able to stay self assured and confident,、yeah. even if maybe it doesn't go your way one day or yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great attitude to have.、Uh, I mean, I wish I, wish I was that, that、uh, well thought out,、uh, grading、uh, attitudes at、uh, your age or even maybe still. <laughs>、uh, But that's amazing.、Uh, It really、cool. is. So, how do you deal with struggles? Like, if, if, if you hurt yourself or you're injured or you have a setback, how do you, what's your attitude towards failure? Honestly, it's very similar to grading.、Um, As, yeah, I would take it 
see what I could do. You know, the, the, take the issue, um, address it, understand it, and then either, you know, take action to it, either avoid it next time, let's say if it was a mistake or something, or um, go over it and just continue on. I kind of just, so just kind of roll the punches, I'd say, is kind of how I go. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think so. Okay, About so there. you just sort of take it in strides. Yeah, like take it in said, strides. Very much like you approach your grading. Yeah. So it's not the end of the world if yeah. you fail. Do you fail sometimes? Not generally. <laughs> not, I generally do not fail. Oh. But yeah, yeah, I generally do not fail. But of course, I do have failures, and that, that's okay too. I mean, you can't be perfect. And if you were perfect, uh, who are you? <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah something that, like that. Yeah. yeah, that's such a great attitude oh, to have. It's going to serve you well for a long time, I'm sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit about. How do you feel? Do you feel like school is designed for you? Oh, that's a good one. All right. Um, to an extent, uh, yes, because I'm able to make uh, relationships with people that I like, uh, people that I enjoy being around, and the people I, that'll help me get to the next step or um, shine light on different opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, but also on the flip side, no, because it, the curriculum itself is not really individualized. So relationship-wise, I love it. It's good. You know, mm -hmm. sports, academic, yeah, all that. But yeah, in just the academic side, it seems as though a lot the um, a lot of the curriculum is just general, very general. And even if it is a specialized class, it's still the whole focus is on being a rigorous, like ri rigorous, and not really being. Um, in depth, so just racing through and not actually getting anywhere with it. So just like skimming the top of the ocean, but like swimming as deep as like a pool type thing. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's such a good metaphor. Oh, I d yeah, I just thought. About it. No, it's, that's, <laughs> that's actually in in the I'm in education. Oh, so oh. That, we talk about that as a. Uh, a mile wide and an inch deep. Oh, oh, so it's like trying to cover everything, but never really truly yeah, understanding exactly or knowing something yeah. well enough to take ownership over yeah. it. So you've experienced that, I'm sure, in your Definite, life. It yeah, sounds like what definitely. you were just describing. Yeah. So what would it look like if you could just wave a magic wand and have the school experience you always wanted? What would that look like? I know I'm putting you on the spot. A yeah, yeah, totally, totally cool. Um, I've actually thought about that. I've talked with it through a few with a few teachers um, and friends, and I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna because I don't know. Um, I don't know what's best for me all the time. So I guess something along the lines of what I'm whatever you see a student um, succeeding in and not failing in all the time and actually liking what they're succeeding at. Um, kind of just build off of that. Maybe not make it a, oh, yes, you have to take math or you have to take ceramics. Uh, well, sometimes it's not exactly those things. Sometimes they're um, able to talk better, maybe some kind of communication class. Like that's also can be general, but still it's better than just um, like a general history class. Sometimes people just like World War II or something. Some people are better at... Um, calligraphy than they are at ceramics so you have to just, just take different um, different talents and be able to morph it and build their own curriculum by helping that individual person get to where they want to go but that's also a huge thing because some people don't know where they want to go and then also yeah how, how I said sometimes I don't know what the best thing is for me mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's just kind of confusing yeah I'd say that'd be a confusing thing and hard to answer yeah, yeah. and also kind of a a weird thing to put on someone else to require that of another person to fill whatever, um, yeah, to fill like the requirements kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I want to go back to the example oh, that cool, you cool, gave. Cool. You talked about, you know, maybe in history class, instead of just covering all of history, someone might be really into World War II. Yeah. So in that situation, do you think they would get as much or more out of the class by 
focusing and maybe spending a whole year studying the part of history that really inspires them instead of trying to know it all and maybe never coming out with anything? What do you think? I'm, I'm just curious your oh, perception. Yeah. You think that would be uh, beneficial or how? Um, I think it would be beneficial to the the person because they'd at least have um, more information they'd have more knowledge be able to speak about World War II as mm -hmm. we said uh, a little bit more like obviously more if you spent like a year on it you'd probably have a in-depth knowledge on it um, but however that not like whatever that knowledge of World War II however it applies to the essentially the real world or like the business world or whatever world you want to end up with I don't know mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you just have to be able to apply it I guess so whatever you take and whatever you decide you hey I want to learn this well how could that be applied to where you like big picture mm -hmm. so whatever yeah whatever knowledge you learn even if it's really specialized like learning World War II instead of the entire history um just however you apply that to what you're going to just, how are you able to build off of that? So build yeah. off of that knowledge. Yeah. So do you think, or how do you think somebody could have a better ownership over something completely different? Say they studied really hard in world war two. Do you think they would be better at studying other types of history later on because of that experience? Um, I, I believe so. I, yeah. I believe they would be able to. Um, just to be able to apply whatever either studying skills or memorization skills, um, just taking, as I said before, taking that knowledge either not necessarily being the class itself or whatever they did outside that class to successfully complete that class, and using that and building off of it to benefit themselves in either other classes or, yeah, the real world. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like you, you feel pretty confident they could transfer that experience to other areas of their life, kind mm -hmm. of how you have taken this self-assuredness in your sports and sort of put it as a blanket yeah. over your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. I, oh, yeah. I, wish, I wish you were running our school system. Oh. That would be so great. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> That's, that means a lot, actually, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something called a liberal education. Oh. Have you ever heard that term before? Liberal, yes. Education, yes, but not together. Okay. No. Yeah. So a liberal education is essentially the idea that we should have a broad base of understanding. So we should have okay. a little bit of history, a little bit of art, a little bit of science, a little bit of math. That's basically what our school system mm, yeah. was founded on, that yes. idea, or has sort of formed around this idea. And it's just, this goes all the way back to the Greeks and the Romans, yeah. this idea of a, a liberal education. Do you feel like you've gotten that in school? Do you feel like you have a handle on all the different areas of life that are available to you because of schooling? Not every single handle, um, but I'd say, like, the education, the um, mm -hmm. uh, liberal um, education system that is provided a general gist so I'm able to grab most handles I guess not all of them and sometimes not successfully and sometimes can't even see them but yeah, yeah. so yeah. majority of them generally do pretty okay yeah, yeah good sounds like you're getting yeah. what you need out of school then yeah. right yeah. you've got a taste for a bunch of different yeah. things and that was I think what you were just talking about a few minutes ago about how you don't always know what's best for you right yeah. we don't always have a clear picture of what it is that we want to do and so the idea of a liberal education is just that it's to give us a broad scope of the possibilities so that we can find a specialty mm -hmm. and so it sounds like you've gotten what you needed out of school to me even yeah. if maybe school didn't always prepare themselves for you as well as oh. you like, <laughs> which we can only ask for so much oh, right? yeah. yeah 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 so if just one last question oh, yeah. maybe two okay. what do you really wish you could see happening more often in schools I think um, it would be quite amazing if we could see people be um, more human Mm. And what I mean by that, that's very general, That's, but we can get a little more in-depth by saying um, everyone's personality, get, um, let's see. So what I mean by human is just to be um, kind, 
just very kind and understanding and um, seeing that people, each individual person has unique talents mm -hmm. and trying to find, because, you know, high school or whatever level of school you're at is um, you're always trying to find your place in there. So by being essentially human, more kind, accepting to either yourself, you, you know, you're, you need that, and to others, you'll find your place and you won't need to go looking for it. So, so yeah. It's like, <laughs> it is so beautiful. Too. Oh my gosh. I'm glad I'm recording this. Uh, that was so good. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so we, we were just about out of time here. So I just uh, wanted to ask you do you have anybody you want to say hi to? Your coaches, your mom, your sports? Um, any any fans? Let's see. Um, sure. I'd say uh, Cappuccino High School, thank you um, for all you've done. I'm almost out of here, but it, it was a wonderful time, and I'm ready to go on, though. Um, family, love you. Thank you. I just wanted to thank my guest one more time, Tatum Dioro, for joining me in the studio. I hope everyone has had an amazing time.